I'm eight weeks from my last frost and it's time to start some more seeds. Hello and welcome to Kim's Cozy Corner. We are gonna start some lettuce as well as some more herbs among other things today. Welcome to Kim's Cozy Corner. I'm Kim, and if you're new here, thank you for stopping by. And if you've been here before, thanks for coming back. Today, we are going to continue starting seeds because we are within eight weeks of our last frost date, which means that I need to have all of my cool season crops outdoors in about a month. So my cool season crops can take a light frost. So I wanna get them started the end of March, um, 1st of April at the latest so that they can get in the ground and we can enjoy those as early as possible. Now, based on my garden journal, which is my seed starting journal that I like to use, if you're interested in the journal, the link will be in the description below. In this garden journal, I write down when I should plant all of my different vegetables. And according to the schedule that I've put in place in this journal, it says that I need to be starting oregano and parsley now, as well as some kale. And it even talks about, I need to start some of my flowers now, some of the ones that have like an eight to 12 week germination to get them ready to be transplanted but we're not gonna do flowers today. We are gonna focus on the herbs, kale, and what's the one other thing? And some lettuce, right? So let's get some more lettuce plants started because I didn't like running out of lettuce. I ran out, I don't ever wanna run out again. I have lettuce growing in my indoor growth space, but in about a month, I can put lettuce outdoors because those are cool season crops and they can take a light frost. And if we have a hard frost, that's okay too, because I have frost covers that I can put over my containers once I take them outside. But I wanna have them ready to go outside in about four weeks. So let's talk about what we're gonna to plant today. I already have my trays started, my little seed starting trays. Now, Again, I use the super cheap ones when I'm at this stage because I need to maximize my seed starting space in my indoor grow tent. I have a five by five grow tent, and here's a picture of it here. And I am not only starting my seedlings for the whole year, right, for the ones that it's time to start, but I'm also growing food that I'm eating during the winter. So. In a five by five space, I'm trying to do a lot. So I have to start very small and then I up pot once the seedlings get large enough. And then that way I don't have all of these seedlings taking up so much room in my indoor grow space. So we are ready to go. Let me tell you what we're gonna to plant today. And so again, according to my schedule here on 228, of this year, so February 28th, which is, by the way, today's date, I should be starting oregano and parsley. Kale, I should have started a couple of days ago. And lettuce, you can start that anytime. So that's the plan for today. So for the oregano, we will be growing this very simple burpees oregano. And we will be putting that in my new metal raised beds, which when we get ready to put those outside, you'll definitely get to see all of that. For the parsley, I have several different types of parsley. So I'm gonna do a triple curled parsley from In My Gardener. I'm gonna do an extra curled dwarf parsley. And extra curled is, um, the extra curled is gonna be a dwarf, so it's not gonna get very tall. The extra curled dwarf uh, parsley says that it only gets about 12 inches tall compared to, well, the triple curled is only about a 12 inch plant as well. Let's see what the rest of these say. I'm gonna also do a dark green flat parsley. And this one, 
plant height gets between 12 inches and 18 inches. I'm going to do um, an Italian parsley. The Italian parsley was a free seed that came with my green stalks. And uh, there's not a lot of information on it. It says that I can grow it in my leaf or my original planter. And I have green stalks in my indoor grow space right here behind me. And we will have 11 of them outside once the season begins. But all of my parsley and all of my oregano will be going in my new metal raised beds. So we just need to get them ready. And then the last herb that I'm gonna be starting today is a kale. And this is a curly, I can't even read it anymore. What does it say? Scotch, I think is what it is. A curly scotch, it says kale, blue curled scotch. Don't know much about it. It's from a seed share with Guten Gardenings. And um, I grew it last year and they had some massive plants. Like I would pick enough leaves off of one plant and it would feed my family for a week. I mean, these plants were massive. They grew well in my area. Now, Guten Gardening um, is, I think, zone five. They're up in Wisconsin, so it's even colder where he lives. And this plant was very happy in my garden. So we're gonna grow some more of that from a curly kale standpoint. And then we're gonna jump into some lettuce. And yeah, I bought some more seeds. I know I shouldn't but why not? I bought some more seeds. And so I am going to do some Old Faithfuls as well as some new seeds. So one of the Old Faithfuls is Merlot, which I love this Merlot. It's a beautiful dark leaf lettuce. Lantus Winter as well, which was also a free seed for me. And it loves the colder weather. So this would be a perfect lettuce to get outside in early spring. And then I will be doing some new things that I've never tried before, which I'm super excited about. And I can't pronounce all of them. I'm not gonna pretend like I can. We're gonna do Lunix. This is a type of oak leaf lettuce. It says that it's a rare seed and it's good for hydroponics and out of season growing. So that's a good thing. We will also be growing this flashy butter gem. It is a type of romaine lettuce and it's nearly a full size romaine type head of lettuce and it has some dark red splotches all over it. We're gonna do a crisp mint, which is a romaine type lettuce as well, but it's a larger head. And the last lettuce that we will be starting is called Tennis Ball. Isn't that cute? I thought that was the cutest little thing. Um, but it's a six to eight inch in the diameter head of lettuce. Um, and it's a very loose butter, I believe. Yep, butter head type. So those are the lettuces we're gonna start today. We got to stay on track with our seed starting so we'll be ready to go outside as soon as possible. For these, I'm going to quickly get them together and get them planted. And I've shown you many times before on how to start seeds, so I won't spend a lot of time on that today. What I do recommend is that you follow whatever the directions are on your seed pack, and that's how you start your seeds. Base it on your seed pack. And if you got room to start them in large containers where you don't need to up pot, do that. And your container doesn't have to be these seed starting trays. It could be a solo cup. It can be any container you want it to be as long as it's well draining. So I will get these put in and then I will bring you back. So before I go any farther, I do want to talk a little bit about my seed starting mix. I prefer to buy my seed starting mix, but you can per but you can make your own if you wish. And so I just use the Jiffy seed starting mix and I use boiling water to sterilize my mix prior to me starting seeds in it. And I sterilize my mix to keep any type of larva from hatching fungus gnats, all of those type insects that you don't want in your house by sterilizing your 
soil before you start, you keep that from happening so you won't be overwhelmed by unwanted insects. I talk about it every video, but I know we have new people here, so I just wanted to quickly state you can use your own seed starting mix, you can make your own, you can use potting soil, use whatever you prefer to use, but sterilizing it will keep the insect pressure down. Now, if you're short on space and you want to overplant each of your cells because you know you're going to have to transplant, to transplant, you'll pull your young seedlings apart to put one in each container once they get a little larger and after they have true leaves. So I am putting anywhere from three to five seeds or more, if my hand gets a little shaky, in each one of these little cells because I know I'm going to pull them apart and up pot them in the future. But if you're gonna put them in their final home, I wouldn't put any more than three seeds, just in case some don't germinate. And then you can um, thin them out to one seed per pocket. If you're already in the size that you need to be in, they give them plenty of room to grow until it's time for them to be transplanted outdoors. If your plants are um, more like leafy greens, you can plant three or four in a plug and plant those three or four together as a plug. So um, if it's a heading type seed uh, or a heading type plant, then you might not wanna do that because they need more room to grow. But if it's a leafy green, you can keep a couple seeds in each plug. And that's the technique that I will be using for my parsley. Since parsley is kind of more leafy, I will be leaving several of them together in the plug when it's time to get them up potted. Now parsley is by far my favorite herb. There was a time I would have said that that was basil, not anymore, it's definitely parsley, hence why I'm growing so many different types of parsley. And I do have a year supply of parsley but I am feeding a total, and I've been saying 11 people, but it's really um, 12 people that I'll be feeding this year. And so I need to up my supply so that I'll have more to share with my family and friends. So I have all of the seeds in, I have them lightly covered, and I like to just give them a little pat on the top just so they don't fly around. Some of these seeds are so small that, that I barely cover them up according to the directions on the seed pack. So following those directions. And so I want to make sure that they are in there and they are happy because at the end of the day, we want them to come to the party. We always talking about the party. We like to have a vegetable party around here. Now that the seeds are in, we want to make sure that we water them in as well. And so the way to do that is to water from the bottom. And so you want to, you don't want to keep your seeds too wet because if you keep them too wet, then the roots will rot, they won't grow, they won't be happy. But you water from the bottom. So I've added water to this tray here and it will absorb from the bottom up into the tray and it'll get this really dark brown color. And as the weeks pass, as days pass, I should say, you're gonna see that the soil color will get a lighter brown or whatever color soil you're using. And once that soil gets lighter, say maybe the top half inch or so, then you will water again. So you don't wanna keep it too wet. One of the other things you can do when you're starting young seedlings is give them a spray just to kind of help them get started. So you can spray the top of your cells. And this is the only time I spray the top of my cells. I'll just be honest with you. I don't do this only when I'm first starting my seedlings. Especially if your soil is super dry, by doing this step, it'll help it absorb that water from down below. And my soil is not that dry but it could use a good spray on top. 
So the water is being absorbed from the bottom. Now, after about 20 minutes or so, if there is still water in the bottom of your tray, you need to pour that off. Um, you don't want your seedling sitting in standing water unless you're doing hydroponics. So if there's extra water after about 20 minutes or so, you want to pour that water off the bottom. So you don't want to leave them sitting in that water. But other than that, that's the process. If it absorbs all the water and your plants, uh, your containers are still dry, then add a little bit more water. Simple process on how to water your young seedlings. Now let's move them over into the growth space. Now I am in my indoor growth space and I am putting these up under one of my grow lights. Now these are just typical shop lights, but I, in this particular one, I do have a grow light in this particular um, feature, but you don't have to. You can use just regular shop light lights. They don't have to be grow lights, not for your young seedlings anyway. And my young seedlings technically don't need light right now. I have my lights on a timer. So they come on and they stay on. And I don't forgot y'all, they've been on a timer for a couple of years now, but somewhere between 14 and 16 hours. So when they come on, they stay on all day and then they go off at night. Now these seedlings don't need light to germinate. I don't think these do, but since they're on a timer, I know that every 16 hours the light's coming off and then it's going to go off at night. Now, as soon as your seedlings break ground, for m most seedlings, that's when they need light. If they don't have light, they're going to start stretching and they're going to get long and they're going to get lanky. And that's not what we're looking for. So I have light on these. And you want to keep your light as close to the top of the container as possible. Unless you have a serious, powerful grow light, then follow the directions on that particular manufacturer's light. But for these shop lights and the very limited power of the light that's inside of it, I like to keep it no more than a few inches above the plants that are growing. Now, once I get to my true leaves, let me give you an example. Once you get to true leaves, so the first two leaves that come up, they look the same no matter what kind of plant you have. But once you get beyond those first two leaves, then you get to what's called your true leaves. And this is probably a poor example. I don't have anything growing right now that's at a true, that's at that first leaf. Everything already has true leaves that I'm growing. Ah, here's an example. I got one. So in this container right here, let's look at this particular one right here. This one right here. There are two little baby leaves down low right here. That's the first two leaves you see when um, seeds sprout. That's the first two. Those are not true leaves, not these first two leaves. But then in the center, up out the center, there are these two leaves here. Those are true leaves. And once you get to a true leaf, if you are up potting or transplanting into a larger cell, that's when you would do it. Not with the first two leaves, but once you get to the true leaf. And so hopefully in about a week or so, we will have our first plants popping up and we'll know which seeds are coming to the party. Since I'm here, let me show you how my other seedlings are doing. This isn't a full um, indoor grow tour, but I can at least show you how my seedlings are doing. So I'll start up top here. These are brassicas that I've already up pot to one plant per cell. I believe most of these are broccolis up here in this tray. And they're doing really well and they're happy. This is where we were just looking. This is the one we worked on. Beside it here, I have some plants that have been up potted into their final home before they go out. I like this purple cabbage here. I got some broccoli back there as well. I believe there's some um, golden acre cabbage in here as well. But then I have a few things that I've started that hasn't done really well on germinating yet. Like here's another plant right here. Those are not true leaves. So we're still waiting on true leaves for that Brussels sprout there. And then I have this cell right here that I need to up pot. So we're beyond 
the true leaves and they're getting thick and full and we need to get these up potted. Down here, I have some Chinese cabbage as well as more brassicas that we need to get transplanted up. I have my first round of herbs in here. So these are rosemary and I had to plant them twice because we had poor germination. This is sage, I believe. Nope, I'm sorry, that's sweet marjoram. Beside it is sage, thyme, and y'all, here we go with this celery again. I wanted five, I'm up to 20, and they're still coming in. They're still coming in. And celery takes a long time to germinate. So I thought they weren't germinating. I added more celery, and now I'm in trouble because I got 50 plants. So I'm gonna have to transplant up or pull out. And I don't like to throw anything away, but the celery's here, it's happy, and they're coming up. Back here, I have mostly my onion that are growing. And of the onion, some of them have done really well. I have one little golden acre container here that we need to finish up potting. And then more onion back there. Now, I did have some onion seeds that didn't germinate and I bought new seeds and so um, I will show you the pictures of those because there's nothing growing in those cells, but I want you to see what will be growing in those cells. From a red onion standpoint, I planted whatever this is, and here's the seed pack for it, and it's replacing all of the red onion that I could not get to germinate, and so I got three cells of that one. And in this last container over here, I, some of the plants are doing really well, and then there are others that I had to buy new seeds. So Globo, I had to buy new seeds because my seeds didn't germinate, and here's a picture of the Globo. And since I was online, I had to get this one as well. Alisa, Alisa Craig, I think is what it's called, and here's a picture of that. And y'all, we're just growing this one for fun. Look how big this onion is gonna get. We'll have some fun with that one. But all of the rest of the seeds did really well. They're growing really well. We're not ready for haircuts or anything like that. I do have a fan on my young seedlings, and that is something you need to consider, putting a fan on your young seedlings to mimic the wind, right? If they were outdoors, the wind would be blowing and they would be moving back and forth, giving them stronger stems and that will give you a stronger overall plant. So you really should think about putting some type of airflow on your young seedlings. Whether you're in a grow tent or on a windowsill or whatever, you want to have some type of air movement for your plants. Now, the last area that we didn't talk about are my peppers. And I started 35 different peppers about a week ago, I believe, it's been about a week ago, and let me share with you how they're doing. So for the peppers, it's only been about a week, so we're talking about seven days. And they are, they've germinated, pretty much every cell has germinated except for a handful. They're happy. I do have them on a heating mat, and they're at 77 degrees, which is helping with the overall germination. I'm making sure I'm keeping up on my watering, but they are doing really, really well. Now these right here are 10 year old seeds that I didn't think were gonna germinate and y'all, I overdid it. There's like 500 seeds in this one pocket. So we will definitely have to clear those out and clean those up. And I'm gonna save as many as I can though. So my 10 year old seeds came up. My one and two year old seeds have come up. And in the back here where you see Ancho 101 and Anaheim Chili, the Ancho 101 are 20 year old seeds, the Anaheim Chili, I think they're older seeds, I don't remember how old right now, but they haven't come up yet, not yet. I'm not giving up yet because it's only been about a week. It could take up to 21 days for your seeds to germinate. So I will keep you posted on all of the young seedlings on their journey before they move outside into the outdoor growth space. 
I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel and you'll be able to see everything that's going on and turn on notifications because I'm posting every two or three days. And if you're planting around the same time that I'm planting, at least you'll be able to know when it's time to plant, plant something new. Until next time, and I hope there will be a next time that you come back to Kim's Cozy Corner. Bye.